We're now joined by the stars of this incredibly powerful film, Jack O'Connell, Miyavi, Finn Whitrock, and Garrett Hudlin. What's up, guys? Thanks oh, for all up, being hey. here. Thanks Con for having us. Congratulations having us. on making a pretty epic, amazing, and like really powerful film. How, what does that feel like right now? Yeah. Well, I'm curious. I'm curious. I mean, for you right away, Jack. What, what did? How did you feel the first time you watched it? <clears throat> um, I, I got to watch it for the first time. Uh, at one of Angie's places, mm -hmm. uh, where she was working in Malta, so I was able to take my mother along, um, uh, and and so I could watch it. We could all watch it together. It was, on, it was like on a laptop. She loaded up like file by file. Oh, so it's like a rough cut. Very rough cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I felt elated, mm -hmm. and I was able to see the work that Angelina had actually done to elevate our film or whatever we delivered to her. She's gone and elevated and turned it into an epic. I feel. Absolutely. And that's how I felt when I first watched it as well. Was there any sense of when you were looking at the rough cut of that this was already going to be an incredible finished product? Or did you have any, any fears looking at a rough cut? Because a rough cut, even for some of the greatest films, can be pretty hard for, for people to wrap their head around. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think like, I still felt like I needed to see it in a cinema. Mm -hmm. And I since have done. And again, I, I'll stand by what I, what I first thought. I thought Angelina did a good job again. Yeah. And then turn it into something that might stand the test of time even, you know? Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, well, and we had one of the best uh, directors of photography in the world, Deacons. Roger Deakins. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even seeing a little clip sometimes, you'd be like... I look good. That looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely going to yeah. look good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about the acting. You look thinner. Yeah, you look thinner, yeah. <laughs> Way thinner. Yeah, well, that's... that's uh... Well, you guys did lose uh, some weight for, for, for some of the scenes, right? Mm-hmm. How yes. much did you end up, end up losing at the end of the day? Were you calculating? <clears throat> It sort of just kept going till. Oh, oh, we're not going to get competitive here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. I lost it too. No, it's always funny within that. Like you know, it's always the thing to chat. But all of us were so passionate about the project, and mm -hmm. when you think about it, most of these guys lost over half their body weight, and mm -hmm. most of them lost their lives. So you just try and touch on like a percentile of, of looking convincing within this to try and sort of portray these characters and other than that like I mean you know we we got to go home at the end of the day so. yeah right essentially yeah. portraying these characters and and going through <clears throat> the rigmarole to look convincing is nowhere near the test of actually having mm. been those those exactly. people in Louis Zamperini mm -hmm. and Zamperini was was he on set at all I know he passed away just before the film was released uh, Angelina Jolie has said that she showed him some of the film in his hospital bed but did you guys meet him at all did you talk to him before she Shooting, was he there? Yeah, we all met him in, in his home, didn't we? Yeah, we, we all got a chance to go he, around to the, his the home. The flight to Australia was a little uh, dicey, I think, for him. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. But uh, we all we all got to meet him in LA before we started shooting. Miyavi, did you did you meet Louis? Yeah, after the filming, for me. What so, what what was well, that after, like right, for yeah. you? Oh, after filming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Because you're playing <coughs> his 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 abusive captor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know. Everyone, including me, Angie, producer Matt, and everyone's so anxious because mm -hmm. you know we didn't know how we how he re reacted. So you know, I took my daughters to his house, but he welcomed us because you know he, Louis couldn't meet the bird after the war ended. Mm -hmm. so, the bird being uh, the the bird is the name of the captor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were all anxious, but you know he was so you know welcomed us mm -hmm. and then charming person. And we I felt. Forgiveness was real. You know? Really? Yeah, from his behavior and his strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you uh, talk to him at all about about Bird and sort of think about what you had done on screen and what he could tell you about it? Actually, just I was also nervous, you know, how he, you know, thinks about our performances mm -hmm. in the film. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, you know, he was so, you know, already overcame everything, and I explained on how I felt on set. As a man who played the bird, as a Japanese, it was so you know, I was so hesitant to tackle this role. But it's all about his message, mm -hmm. you know, forgiveness and how strong a human being can be. So, what made you hesitant? I mean, you know, the story itself is really com you know controversial, mm -hmm. and it's not even translated in Japan. It's not popular at all. Really? So I didn't know about this you know story before. Obviously, I didn't want to represent any negative side of Japan, the country I was born and raised. So that's why I, before I met Angie, I, was not, I wasn't sure that if I was capable or if I was going to do this. Have you taken uh, any, any heat for being in the, in, in, in the movie? 
any heat, any, have you, yeah, like, any uh, flack, cr- criticism. Negative. I'm giving criticism. You a hard time. Thanks, guys. Oh. <laughs> I'm sticking with slang for yeah. some reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, from the audience? Or? From, from Japanese audiences, from Japanese fans. Who but actually, yeah, they're also nervous, I mean, anxious. But, mm-hmm. but, you know, when I first met Angie, she said that she wanted to create something meaningful, mm-hmm. which could be between America and Japan, even countries which have been having similar issues in conflict. And then it's not about the war or conflict between America and Japan. It's all about Louis's message, mm-hmm. his attitude toward life, never give up in his, uh, his unbroken spirit. So mm-hmm. I thought, you know, everyone can receive and feel uh, his, his, his life and then what he overcame and then, you know, many obstacles in his life. And I was so amazed when I saw the footage of Louis running with the local children in Nagano Olympics in the very end. Everyone was smiling. Mm. So that's the message, that's the answer. So that I was, I'm now confident mm-hmm. that you know, everyone can you know, learn from his incredible experience. It is, a, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peace out, yeah, we're done. We can, I mean, we were supposed to have 25 minutes, yeah, so that's let's it. just call we're it. We're not gonna say anything better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys were, were sort of put through a bit of a, a, a test to, for auditioning, right? It wasn't an easy audition for you guys. Is that, is that true? I had like a, an hour long audition for, for, for Louis actually, uh, the part of Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I was like, uh, the casting director was being the bird and I was being tortured and I was like doing push ups and, and weeping. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then time went by and I didn't think anything of it. And then all of a sudden it was like. You were doing push ups and weeping like in the casting? No, they made me like do push ups so I was like out of breath and dying and uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's kind of a blur, yeah. But then, like, yeah, weeks later, I got a call that, like, Angelina wanted to meet me at her house for the part of Mac. And so I, like, reread the book, and I was like, oh, yeah, this, I, could, I could dig this. Mm-hmm. And then she was really passionate about, like, making that, making Mac's arc kind of an emotional journey through it. Um, you know, so we all kind of contribute something to, to our main man here. You know? mm-hmm. Main man? So I'm just watching someone broken. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you said that you were so passionate about this project, you would have been uh, a caterer yeah. on it. How, yeah. So what was your audition audition process like, and how did you get involved? <clears throat> I know you I, worked with the... I didn't, I didn't necessarily um, audition. It was a, a story that I've been familiar with for, for quite a few years. I think it was maybe two years before uh, the book had actually come out, and I was given this manuscript, probably about 80 pages. and. And I think even at that time, they were like, oh, so-and-so is kind of chasing this, or so-and-so wants to do it. And I think many years ago, Tony Curtis was, was to play him. So um, Matt Bear, our producer, had been on this project for, I think, 10 years at that point, 15 years now, trying to get it made. And I was speaking to him, and was you know, at that point, it was almost just like, you know, good luck. What an incredible story. What an inspiring journey people should know about this. And then once the book came out, everybody did. But um, Angie had signed on to direct this, uh, what, like a year and a half ago now, and I remember just sort of emailing and being like, look, I'm so passionate about this project. Um, the world needs to see it, and I would be so honored to just be a part of it. And, and I'm fortunate enough to be, in a, be here today with uh, my buddies. <laughs> were, you guys, were you guys able Drinking to be buddies? Drinking a cup with no coffee. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we get this guy some coffee? Can we get him some coffee, guys? Uh, were you guys able to be buddies on set? I mean, was there an, an, uh, an ability to sort of shed the mask once the camera stopped rolling and to hang out and have a good time? Or were you guys sort of feel really pressured and committed all the time in these scenes. We certainly benefited from camaraderie between, I guess, whoever was portraying allied troops. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether that was in the camps or on the raft, uh, there was a solidarity, I think, which I, I personally found very helpful. Yeah. Unfortunately for myself and my RV, uh, it was essential that we kept a, a distance really? between yeah. the pair of us. Yeah, just to enable us to feel a sense of hatred. I had to fear the bird as Louis. And I mean, separately, myself and me, Harvey, we, we get along. We're, we're actually friends, and I sort of predicted that that would be the case, so it mm-hmm. wouldn't have been very helpful to carry that into the dynamic with <laughs> Louis and the Bird on screen. Would it have been, was it hard at all to sort of create a friendship after having done all of those scenes together and mm, not, not really? Not at all. Not at all you know, actually, you know, we had a good time after filming, and actually just, you know, his accent, strong accent was really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't understand what he was saying. So. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, just 
<laughs> you know, he, he, he loves music too. So I'm a musician. Yeah. So mm -hmm. after the filming, just we had... We formed a band. Yeah. Did you really? Gar yeah. Garrett was involved and our yeah, producer, yeah. Matthew Bayer, is a keen drummer. Keen drummer. Yeah. Are you saying, kind of wanna, wait, so what kind of what kind of what kind of music is it? I mean, that's always the worst question to ask a, no, uh, no, a bandmate. This, this was relevant. Uh, we we uh, Angie mm -hmm. was obvious. We we had to sing Angie by the Stones. Yeah. We covered that. Um, ACDC. ACDC Highway to Hell because we was in Australia. Same. So did you guys <laughs> did you guys perform Angie for Angelina? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. She, she was moshing. She was moshing. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Where was it? In Sydney. Sydney, yeah. Oh, <coughs> while filming or after like rap parties? I'm just just, yeah. after, just the, after we wrapped before. like the the uh, prison camp sequence. Yeah. yeah, I was dead by then. You were you were long <laughs> gone, man. <laughs> yeah. Any any plans to so follow through with this band and keep going? Yeah. <laughs> 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 one day, right? Well, yeah. yeah, one day we'll get yeah. it on. Come to my we'll, show. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Talk to me about your. Uh, uh, Audition process because I heard that you were you actually they put you in a, a cell for a while and 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 sort of did some of the beatings with you just in the audition. Yeah, well by that point it was a screen test, mm -hmm. so I was keen, keen enough, and I, I remember of the small crew that we had assembled for the the screen testing that day, uh, would, would come in spontaneously and start leathering me, um, so. I think after like the third or fourth, yeah. <laughs> after like the the third or fourth time, um, I, I I just got to a point where I wasn't up for doing that again. So I just I got up, I got up and tried to keep a dialect so we could presume that I was still acting. Mm -hmm. But I, I got up and started started giving it, it back a little, and uh, apparently that served me well. That's a bit that Angelina had shown to Louis and he smiled at apparently. Mm -hmm. So you said you were the one guy who fought back. In the audition. Well, Had which, Angelina seen uh, Start Up? Because I mean, there's a lot of your of your performance in that film that I found uh, rel relative to the performance in this one as well. I mean, just in terms of perseverance, that character was obviously of a different mental uh, capacity. But this is uh, something similar. I mean, in terms of fighting back. Mm -hmm. Well, Start Up, uh, it wasn't finished while Angelina was cast in the film. So mm -hmm. I think a rough cut was sent to her, mm -hmm. certainly. But there was another job that I did at home called United. Um, and uh, I played one of our most legendary footballers at, at home, Sir Bobby Charlton. And because that was set in the 50s, I think she, she did say she'd watched that and that was influential to her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, th thankfully. Absolutely. I want to play a clip from Angelina Jolie, who was on The Daily Show last night, talking about how it felt for her to be in the director's chair. But these things you wake up, you realize you, you convince every, the studio, you say, you should give me this job, you know. Give me this job, I'd be the best person in this job. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm so sure of it. And then you get the job, and then you think, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I'm not sure I do. So, so every day was a, was a challenge, and, and, um, but we had a great team, and, and, and I, I think we pulled it off. That's, that's an incredible confession to me for a director to say, to be open about that. I'm curious, there's kind of two kinds of directors. There's the one who's going to show up on set and let you know consistently that they are the leader. Whatever questions you have, I can answer immediately. And then there's someone who can also get something great out of you by being open about where they are with the process as well. Was Angie more like that, very open about being conflicted or nervous about the process? I think it's both, but yeah, I mean, in terms of that, I mean, you guys were on sort of longer than I, but it was always quite open to, to, everybody had done their individual research on who their characters were and we all had an immense amount of respect for them. So mm -hmm. it was what we could find and bring to the table would, you know, um, had the potential of being added in either improvisationally or we'd make something out of a moment that was just sort of sitting eating rice and, you know, maybe there's some conversations or this or that, what, what, you know, was going on in that character's life or what, you know, individual people found from, from having conversations with, with family members of their actual <laughs> characters. So um, she was uh, extremely collaborative mm -hmm. and sort of inspired the whole time, I think, because she's an actress. She, she loves watching actors, they, you know, kind of get a little mental and, and sort of cram and, and you know, uh, trial and error and figure things out. And I think it makes her smile. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But was there uh, any idea, I mean, she's talking about being nervous, and, and that's an interesting thing, I think, for a director to be able to do that on set, if they do do that in front of people, to say, I'm a little nervous right now, but we're going to figure this out. I am, your, I am your leader, but, you know, we're all together figuring this out together. I never, I never saw that side of her. Really? I was like, I mean, 
It never, never self-conscious. Yeah, she's only showing those colors now. Yeah, yeah. now, yeah, yeah. Now Good over. stories for the press. Yeah, like, you were nervous. You were That's what nervous looks like. You yeah, because uh, she, uh, she was like, she was our leader, you know. Yeah. But she was also very collaborative and very curious about what you had to bring. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, let's figure it out together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that that said, she does have a real vision for the movie. Mm -hmm. And although it is a sprawling epic, like Garrett said, like. It is also a very personal film for her because of her relationship with Louis and mm -hmm. her passion for the story. Absolutely. Yeah, but you apparently threw up though with yep. her? Yes. What happened? <laughs>